All right, so I've had some requests on how to do the uh, the cotton and latex method for corpsing, and uh, I think that method has been around for a long, long time, much longer than the uh, the the plastic drop cloth uh, method. Um, and I'm and I'm pretty sure there's probably many uh, tutorials out there how that's done. Um, but for whatever reason, I've had some requests on how uh, I did it, so that's what we're gonna do today. Um, what I am starting with, these are just some cheap bones from Home Depot, the bag of bones. Uh, I have screwed two of these together. I know these bones do not belong with each other, um, but this is what I had and I wanted to um, show you how we do the bridging, the webbing across uh, two different bones, like if it was for ribs or, or you know, your arm, leg, whatever. Um, so that's what we're gonna be uh, corpsing. Stuff that we're gonna be using uh, in order. Um, I got a couple different stains. Uh, this is a Bombay Saf, uh, excuse me, Bombay Mahogany. It's kind of a reddish stain. Uh, this is Kona, uh, which is a darker brown stain. Uh, contact cement, uh, spray adhesive, uh, this is just uh, Super 77 spray adhesive, any kind will do. Some cotton balls, which I am down to four, which is going to be more than enough for what we need for this. Um, I keep scrappings uh, of latex for just random odd shapes of stuff. Um, we'll, we'll attach those and make it look like... Uh, you know, some tissue or something falling off. And then of course some uh, casting latex. I use, um, this is from Brick in the Yard, uh, casting latex. Obviously you don't need five gallons of it. You can get much smaller quantities. You might be able to even find it at Home Depot, Michaels or something like that. Um, but like those little droppings and stuff of latex, you know, stuff like you can get right off the, off the bucket, so. Anyway, that is what we're gonna be working with, so let's get started. All right, first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this reddish stain and crack this thing open. I didn't shake it up, but that's, that's fine. Um, I think this whole method is not as popular because one, it's more expensive, it's more materials to work with, and it takes longer because you got many drying drying times during it. I really should have shook that up. Um, but I got several chip brushes here. And basically all I'm gonna do first is take just a little bit of the stain and I'm just gonna go willy nilly randomly all over. I like to get it down in the creases because once we try to dab it off, those spots will stay. And I'm not trying to get 100% coverage. These screws, we're gonna address those. Those will go away. So don't worry about that. Eh, that's pretty good. Uh, to help me speed things along, I'm going to use my hair dryer to try to draw these, dry these things up a little bit. I'm gonna cut the hair dryer portion out. All right, so that's sat up for just a couple seconds, well, with the hair dryer. And then I'm gonna take my rag and I'm just gonna kind of dab this off a little bit. runs in here. There we go. I try not to wipe it because if you wipe it, you're going to leave streaks. So I just try to dab it, grab it like that. So that is step one. So we no longer need you anymore. I'm going to screw that Okay. 
Next is contact cement. Ideally, you would let this, uh, this stain dry up a good bit first, but we're gonna kind of skip that. In fact, I'm gonna hit this with a hairdryer here for a few more seconds. All right, still a little bit tacky, but that's gonna be okay. So we've got two things we're gonna do with this contact cement. The first thing we're gonna do is we almost want to not cover all of it, but a fair amount, uh, because when we go to do the latex, the latex will peel right off the plastic. So this contact cement um, gives it a good base for that latex to stick. So, and this is actually going to mess with this stain that we just did, which is fine. It kind of gives it this neat texture. And again, I try not to wipe it too much. Or if I do, then I'll go back and I'll try to kind of dab it. You see how that glue kind of starts to want to pull away and it almost looks like some more of that tissue. It'll actually ball up and give it some texture. I want to make sure I get over top of this screw heads because those are going to get covered up. As I'm sure you are well aware, those plastic skeletons have one million tiny little screw holes that are really ugly and it's very easy to make those go away. All right, so that's just with a quick coat of contact cement. And I am going to speed this up again with the hairdryer uh, so we can go on to the next step. All right, so ideally you would let this sit up for probably a couple hours uh, to get that glue good and, and dry. I hit it with the, with the uh, hairdryer and it's still pretty tacky, but it's still, this is still gonna work. So the next step is the fun part. That's where we get all that gross webbing and stuff in between the bones. And I am going to try to zoom in my cell phone with my sticky fingers, bear with me. If that will work, will you work with gloves on? Okay, so apparently when you're in, in the reverse mode, you can't, you can't uh, zoom in. Fine. So, you're just gonna have to look to see it from there. All right. What we're gonna do now, you're not gonna be able, can I raise that up? Let's raise that up a little bit. Let me get a bucket. There, that's a little better. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use the hair dryer and the contact cement, and we're going to literally blow the glue from one side to the other. And I'm not gonna be able to talk during this because it's gonna be noisy, but you'll see. I didn't mean to stop the camera. So we're gonna get a fair amount of glue on our brush.
So hopefully you were able to see that, but as I was pushing the glue down, once I pulled the paintbrush up, it, the glue would stick and kind of make that balloon effect and the hairdryer would blow it. So it's a, it takes some, some practice to get it to blow in the right direction down uh, over onto the other side. But you can see there how it kind of bridged it right there. And right now, these little, little strings, whatever you want to call them, um, are going to be super fragile. So this is where we will have to let it sit for a bit uh, to dry up. I am going to hit it with the hairdryer for a little while, uh, but we're going to come back later and do the next step. All right, so that's good enough. I'm really plowing through this, but that's, that's going to be good enough for what we're doing. Um, so next we're going to do the cotton. And basically all I'm going to do is take a cotton ball and just pull it apart just a little bit, not completely, you know, rip it apart, um, just to get it get a little fuzzy, I guess. And what we're gonna do is I'm just going to, especially like, we'll start with the screw head here that we put in there, hit that with some spray adhesive, and then I'm just gonna dab it on there, and it's gonna leave behind some of the cotton, and that's gonna be just fine, just like that. And we'll hit all up and down this. Just dab it on. That's all you want. Doesn't look like much, but sometimes you get some of these longer chunks. You can kind of push off with your finger. That. And the other one here. That screw head covered up there. Come on. That's too much. Let's hit that again. There we go. And we're just kind of kind of dab it and drag it like so. It's stuck to my finger. And I can't spray. There we go. Imagine if you're doing a whole skeleton. This can be kind of a lengthy process. You don't have to do, you know, you don't have to have 100% coverage on it, obviously. I'm not getting it on our little webbing here because that's something else. But I think for that, that's good enough. For what we're looking at so basically it's just you got the cotton all stuck to it and this the purpose of this is just to hold it temporarily it's not gonna not gonna hold it but what's really gonna hold it is the latex so our casting latex i got a tiny little cup of it and i got a chip brush and i'm gonna take this latex i'm gonna dab it here I want to get 100% coverage on that cotton. See that? And we'll do that everywhere here. Try to avoid getting those big boogers built up. But this really gives it the texture of tissue, flesh, whatever. And this stuff's gonna dry. It's not clear, but it's like translucent. So we might lose a little bit of that first layer of stain, but that's okay. And we're just going to do this everywhere we put, and we're just going to do this everywhere we put cotton. See how the screw heads just disappear? Is that other one? 
So you can do that over top of all, all those little holes and everything that are in the skeleton. Just don't want to leave any uh, raw cotton, I guess, be the best thing. And again, you can see I'm dabbing. I'm not, I'm not uh, like brushing it on. You could, but I think just dabbing it leaves better, better texture here. So, you see we got that all done. Now, this webbing right here, that glue is not going to hold up on its own. So, we're going to very, very carefully brush it. And you're going to you're going to ruin some of those, but the bigger ones will stick. Now, once this is, once there's latex on it and this latex dries, then you're golden because that is you you'd have to not a lot of force but it's it's gonna hold up put it that way and you can do many many layers of this as you want if you really want to build it up for this purpose i'm only gonna do one layer Very carefully trying to get over top of those strings or whatever you want to call them without distorting them, destroying them. And if you got like some of these cotton pieces that you don't like, you can push it around with your finger. Okay. And if we can get in here on the back side. Obviously, if you're doing like ribs or something like that, that's a lot more difficult to get a paintbrush in, but. As long as you can get some latex on it from both points of contact, be good. All right, there we go. So now this will take a little bit to dry, especially with the with the cotton, the that buildup of the the cotton and the latex. So this is gonna, we'll probably let this, I would say overnight, but realistically, it might be ready uh, in an hour or in an hour, no, a couple hours. I'm gonna put a fan on it, and uh, we'll be back later. Oh, hey, I almost forgot about our little uh, pieces of tissue from our latex scrap pieces. So I am going to just cut off a chunk of this here. Ouch, I stabbed myself. And I'm just going to pick a spot. This is kind of dry right there, so we'll just stick it right there. That'll look good. And I just, I'm just going to hit it with some hot glue real quick like that piece there I'm just gonna do one piece just for the sake of this put that there put that there Got a nice little dangly piece hanging off there and then we're gonna use our casting latex to just kind of permanently glue that on adhere it i don't want to get complete coverage because i still want it to be able to flop around and stuff but want to make sure i got coverage to where it's going to make contact and it'll hold it in place so there I'm just going to do, ah, let's do another one. Let's do one more. Let's do one on this side. 
I didn't quite get my my um, screw head covered up as well I would have liked. So let's find another piece out right there. That'll work. And we'll just go glue there, glue there. Ah, of course, now I'm going to cover up my cotton. I didn't even think about that. That's all right. I really did cover up that entire piece of cotton. That's all right. All right, so we got our two little pieces of tissue, tendons, whatever it used to be. So now we'll just let that dry and do the next step. All right, so this is set up for overnight and um, everything's all dry now. And uh, really the only thing lastly we have to do <coughs> is um, do our last bit of a stain. This is that darker brown one, the Kona. And just like the first time, uh, I'm just going to, this time I'm going to be a little bit more thorough, um, just because some of that latex is still, um, uh, pretty, pretty translucent, whitish color, whatever you want to say. So I want to get that on there pretty good and take my rag and kind of dab it off. Again, you'll see those different textures in the contact cement and in the latex and everything really add different color variation to it. So that's basically all I'm going to do on the rest of this now. I'm going to be kind of careful of the, of the, um, little webbing since we only did one layer of latex on it um they're still a little bit fragile but much more much more solid than they were before i really try to get a fair amount off of here like so latex in here a little bit better. A little br dry brush action works good. side absolutely nothing spectacular about this process but like I said before it's not as fast it's not as cheap as doing the uh, uh, drop cloth method but you get a lot different a different type of end result doing it this way I think it looks a little bit more natural and realistic but that's just me I think that's pretty much good enough good enough for this experiment all right, so there you go. That is the contact cement, cotton, liquid latex, wood stain technique that I use. Hope that helps. Got any questions, send them to me. 
other than that, um, that's it.